Now that interest rates are up, we've started to see the housing market cool down. We'll be going through in this video some of the data that has started to trickle in. We'll also be looking at ways that the market could potentially go higher from this point, whether it's the supply or the construction. But stay tuned to the end. I'll be giving my thoughts and opinions as to where I see the market going. But if this is your first time here, my name's Nick. Welcome to Ways to Wealth. Before we get into the video, huge favor, huge ask. If you learn something new or you get some value out of the video, hit that like button for me. I definitely appreciate that. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on for content similar to this. Like I mentioned, let's start by taking a look at what data is flowing through the markets today. And we see in this first graph from the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board, the Toronto home prices have dropped for the second straight month in a row in April. We see over a 5% decline in the uh, monthly change in the average price, meaning that prices are coming down. We also see that the residential transactions on a year over year basis have decreased by over 40 percent, which is an absolutely huge number. We've seen what the past couple of years has done to the housing market, and we could say that with interest rates moving higher, we are going to see a slowdown. So with that being said, I think with the underlying state of what's going on in the real estate market, I'm sure you've seen it all over you know social media or all over the news transactions are down there's not that hot rush to go out and buy homes the meaning that people aren't putting hundreds of thousands of dollars uh bidding over ask but we'll take a look at what's happening on the mortgage side of things so we see this better dwelling article here has compiled some information of canada's total new mortgage lending and we can see it splits both uninsured and insured and we can see over the past couple months it has been on a downtrend and the important part of splitting both of these up is that uh, you would put an assumption in there that for the most part insured mortgages is probably your first time home buyer ones that are early on into the market which is a huge factor for me because in order for real estate prices to continue to go higher you need new entrants into the market so we can see that they are both on the downcline but the insured mortgage they fell off more than 35 to 36 percent so we're not having the same amount of new entrants into the market which makes uh, uh obviously sit back and think that the market is definitely going to be on a pause now a big thing that people also consider and a big thing that uh, you know the real estate bulls always talk about is the fact that we are an immigration heavy nation and the fact that we are bringing so many people into our country that this means that they will continue to buy homes and that rates will never go down so i've been able to find another better dwelling article talking a little bit about our immigration and housing prices over the years and we can kind of draw back to a period uh, in the 90s where it was kind of uh, an opposite effect what i mean here is there's really no correlation between the two and we can see the fact that in the 90s we were heavily uh, bringing in uh, our immigration bringing in people into this country and the red line shows the new price uh, a new house price index and we can see that these numbers did not align as we were bringing in so many people our housing prices actually went down for many years obviously as we head uh, further along the line we can see that there really is no correlation between the two so you could argue that this is not a matter of immigration what douglas porter uh, says is going on is this is a matter of liquidity which depends on the leverage and credit availability ultimately that drives the prices it doesn't matter if prices were 1 million last week if the qualified buyer only has 100k 800k the seller either accepts less or gets to keep the property and what is being said here is that because interest rates have been so low for so long that's actually the key denominator as to what is actually happening here we're pulling back the sheets of the curtain and we're not saying it's um you know the immigration that's coming in we're not talking about supply we're just talking about the fact 
that money has been so cheap for so long and it has fueled so many speculators into the market. And we're going to be looking at the supply side now and the fact that uh, on the construction side. So this uh, this has been floating around on social media and it talks a little bit about somebody who has just entered the market. So we'll briefly read through it now. And uh, I booked a pre-construction property in Kitchener for $1.3 million in new construction. You have to put 20% down and they talk about installments over a certain period of time before the house is built. This person has put 120 k down so far and 20% of 1.3 is like $260,000. So uh, getting upwards of almost halfway there. Uh, but now my mortgage agent from CIBC informed me today that the address in Kitchener max amount uh, of lend that the bank is willing to put out there is 854000 This is a decrease as to what was originally proposed when they went and decided to make that offer. So this leaves that person uh, out 200 k meaning that they, they won't be able to get that 200 k from the bank. They'll either have to go to family and friends, but since that's such a huge chunk of change, they're probably going to have to go to a private lender that's going to charge them anywhere between 10 to 20% in interest. Well, the realistic thing is that this is probably happening to a lot of people right now that have bought new construction out, outside of the GTA, and now banks are looking at their loan um, you know, uh, loan value, making sure that they're only giving out as much as what they deem the property be worth. So we've already seen uh, housing prices fall uh, a little bit off a, a cliff. And now either this person is going to be paying super high interest rates, which makes them even more house poor. And we've covered this topic before, or they're going to have to f like give up the dream of owning this home and what happens that 120k that they put on the table well that goes to the builder and that's gone so that would definitely put them out for a very long part so this is definitely something that i'm watching is watching these um, homes go up or assignment sales etc so this is uh, kind of talking about the supply side obviously a lot of people come in and say oh if we just built more homes we would be able to satisfy what the canadian real estate market is doing but in reality it's not that if we were to build new homes, we know the fact that inflation is causing a bunch of uh, materials and labor prices to go up. That means that the builders will want a certain price and we can see that the banks are already hesitant on how much they are going to be lending out. I don't know if that's the solution either. So I guess this gets me into the main point. I do believe that there is more damage to come. We know that the Bank of Canada is talking a little bit about uh, potentially raising the interest rate further, whether that's the June 1st meeting or further into the summer. They're really watching what inflation is doing. Inflation is the key denominator, but there is a possibility of making a policy mistake. The fact that inflation could be coming down, but they could be still hiking rates. Now, a key determinant of checking out uh, where the five-year fixed mortgage rate could go is by looking at the Can Canada five-year government bond and taking a look at it. This is a one-day chart, obviously, on the uptrend. If we look at it over a three-year period, it is definitely on a super uptrend. We've seen fixed the five-year fix go from 2% to over 4% in a quick couple of months. That means that houses will continue to be more expensive and my opinion on the matter is that i think there is more pain to come i think we will see uh further declines further panic um but trying to figure out how much further we can go i don't know and that's uh that's obviously the the luck of the magic and we know it's hard to time the market so if you're looking to get into the market right now you won't be dealing with those bidding wars you won't be dealing with huge amount of sums over ask Maybe it is a good time to nibble, but uh, let me know what your thoughts below are. Are we going to see further damage in the real estate market in Canada? Or is this kind of going to be a quick little period and then we're going to continue high higher from here? So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're still here with me, please hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I hope you all have a great week in the markets. Happy trading.